All right, so uh, we're going back to Inman, which has the top 10 reasons you'll fail as a real estate agent. I have my own, but actually this is a decent list. I, I previewed it, sorry to say. It's not gonna be completely blind. I haven't seen all of them. But the first one is you won't prospect. I would say this is the hardest thing to do as an agent every single day. You feel like it, you don't feel like it, you're tired, you're hungover, you're feeling good, you just want a big deal, you have a huge closing, you have a walkthrough, whatever the case is, you don't want to prospect, but this is a, <laughs> this is, that was me for about seven years of my career. Number two, following up. I was never bad at following up, but the problem is when you follow up, you're always thinking like, what do I say? You know, I'm following up with this person that wants to do business, potentially. I called someone that I haven't talked to in a year, and he goes, actually, I appreciate the phone call. Number two, uh, number three, I'm sorry, you'll let one bad experience throw you into a downward spiral. I, it's, I don't think this one really, that many people actually go through that. Yes, yeah, some people, but if you think that one bad experience, you were not meant for the industry because there will be a lot of bad experiences and you will be called whatever name that you don't want to be called and obviously door is closed in your face so it's pretty much just like, you know, You'll think the business is too hard when the truth is you just haven't made the decision to be great yet. Wow, that's deep. Okay, let's let's take it easy now, Inman. Yeah, obviously it is hard because there's a lot of pieces that you have to put together in regards to each transaction. There's so many different types of people when the truth is that you haven't made the decision to be great yet. I don't agree with that second one, but you may think that the business is too hard. Uh, which actually leads into number five. You'll say that it's too competitive. It is definitely competitive and it is extremely competitive at the top. I'm not there yet. However, I know that as I get better, everyone else is already established in their pitch, their objections and prospecting and their marketing and everything else. So I know that the competition is gonna be very, very challenging at the top, but that's where all the money is made. Uh, number six. You'll be making the same mistakes over and over. This just annoys me to no unknown territory. The same mistakes over and over. Yeah, obviously if you're not learning from your mistakes, you should not be in the industry. Number seven, you choose comfort over success. 100%, this is everything. You don't ask for business. You don't make the bold question. You don't sit in silence. Uh, you just are very passive. You have to be aggressive. You have to be willing to just say what everyone else is thinking to get the deal done. You have to be willing to fight on your client's behalf. You know, There's gonna be very uncomfortable conversations that are in person and over the phone. If you choose comfort, you're not gonna be good or you're gonna be all right, you know? And it's, it's, it's just a long-term kind of, you know, obviously, you won't make it a team sport, number eight. Uh, I don't know what that means. I don't want it to be, well, a team sport when it comes to a transaction, yes, we're all trying to get to a common goal. The attorney's on the other side, the broker on the other side, the client on the other side. If there is a board, you have to be solution oriented. That's all I talk about is that when a problem arises, we just had a problem on one of our transactions. I said, okay, what's the solution? What do we need to do? We need to, there's a lot of people that want to make this close. So what, what needs to happen? And you have to be the one that steers the ship, even though you don't want to steer the ship. Sometimes you'd feel like, can someone else make a decision? Can someone else do their job correctly? So I don't have to do it for you. Number nine, the outlook is too short-sighted, 100%. Uh, this is because you don't have insurance, you don't have an IRA, you don't have a pension, you don't have a bi-weekly paycheck, you don't get anything, you're an independent contractor. So of course it's short-sighted because you have a lot of bills and invoices and you just need to pay for life. <laughs> so it's, I understand the short-sightedness, that's why it comes down to like what feels good now and most people choose comfort over Success, I understand that quite well because I finally, for the last two years, dialed in what needs to happen for me to get to where I want to get. Number 10, you focus on your expenses instead of growing your sphere and level of influence. 100%, this was me for six years of my life. I was always saying, I don't want to spend money. The cliche-ish is you spend money to make money, blah, blah, blah. You know, obviously that's easy to say until you're actually a business owner, which is every single real estate agent, but when you become a business owner and you pay for the office rent and all this other overhead that you're not used to, obviously that's when you start saying, okay, 
I need to put money aside. This goes to the future. This goes to the present. And this is obviously just things that I owe for paying rent and marketing and you know photography and videography and all that other jazz. But the future is essentially just, okay, how do I tap into more business instead of just making phone calls every single day, which is pretty much what I do to for sale by owners tapping into those other resources, which is a magazine for us, which is more video, which is a uh, mailings, newsletters, you know, that all cost money to obviously not only organize, get the content, make sure that it looks pretty and it's sent out on time. That also takes a lot of time. So systematizing is everything. I like this article. Obviously it, it's Inman, which is a real estate uh, website, but if you guys have something else and you're a real estate agent, let me know what yours is. For me, I would say the reasons that you fail is that you don't show up every single day. That's it. That's, that's simple. Okay. If you show up every single day, and you wear a suit, you're like, okay, what do I do? I, I need to do something. I'm here. So instead of going on Facebook and Instagram, maybe I should follow up with someone. Maybe I should send an email. So. I like the, uh, and obviously the source is gonna be there, 10 reasons you fail as a real estate agent. I would say that's why the percentage of failure is at 50% for the first year, and I think it's like 85, five years in. It might even be higher. There's no way 15 out of 100 make it five years. Five years is a long time to be in real estate with no bottom to your paycheck. There's no bottom to your paycheck. There's also no ceiling, but there's no bottom. And that's where most people say, I can't pay for my apartment. I can't pay for my expenses. So then they just leave the industry. So anyway, have an amazing day.